This is a carburetor off of a boat. It's a Rochester two-jet carburetor. Carburetors work like syringes, paint guns, and golf bags. Let me explain. Mostly they're like a golf bag in the way that they function. In a golf bag, you have a golf clubs that help you to go long distances, medium distances, and short distances. A carburetor is designed with circuits that work at high RPMs, middle RPMs, and idle. So your idle circuit works a lot like your putter. Your mid-range is like your irons and your chippers. And your wide open or your main jets or your main circuit is like your woods. You know, like your one through three woods that you use to tee off with. So this is a carburetor from a boat. It's a two barrel. Um, you have two barrels, single barrels, four barrels is typical. And uh, let me just go over some of the components on it. So this is the choke. This is an electric choke and the way that this works is it closes off or chokes the air this is like the throat or you know access to the engine this is how the engine breathes in so this basically chokes off the air uh, to make the rich mixture that you need when you're starting cold so when it's cold this closes cold close choke ccc and uh, when it warms up or when the electric uh, circuit indicates or heats that coil and there's a bimetal spring in there uh, that when it gets hot it opens this up and then you can breathe freely. In the bottom end of the carburetor as you can see here uh, you have these butterflies and these work with your throttle so this would be at idle and I don't know if you can see them but there's two tiny little jets one here and here and that's how you idle even though the air is blocked off here there's a little bypass and fuel goes in through these two so that's your idle circuit that's like your putter so when you stomp on the gas, you have two things moving here. And this is a choke uh, pull off or choke let off or whatever. So that when you stomp on the accelerator, um, it takes the choke off so that you can get up and go. So what's this lever on the side here do? Well, this is like a power booster, power plunger. There's a little plunger and spring system in here that really squirts in the gas. I said it's like a syringe. Um, a syringe you can suck up water like this so it's got basically a syringe in there so say this is gasoline and then it just you know squirts it out like that your engine sucks in the fuel and creates air flow through here a lot like your syringe does just like you can suck up water like this your engine cylinders when they go down they do the same thing so on a four stroke engine you suck, squeeze, bang, blow. So that first stroke, you suck in an air fuel mixture as the piston goes down and it, the air rushes in because uh, nature just can't allow a vacuum. So on that suck stroke, it creates vacuum. When it does that, let me go into how carburetors work for just a second and we'll go back to our carburetor, but we'll just get these examples out of the way. So here I have a bottle of water and a straw going down into it. Um, this would be like this bottom portion of the carburetor. I did this in a motorcycle video and people really liked it, so we'll do it again. Uh, but basically, it works on the Venturi principle. So just how you have low pressure with the syringe and it sucks stuff in, you have low pressure over the jets and that causes you to have the fuel move up. So as I blow across the top of this, watch what happens. The straw's down in the water. Uh, just like you'd have gasoline down there and then the jets that are in here I'll show you the jets in a minute and uh, you get this so what's happening is as I blow across the top it creates low pressure in here and that low pressure just like the weatherman says stuff will rush in to fill if you have low pressure then you're gonna have a storm system you're gonna have water all in the case you have fuel so I'm going to create a low pressure system here by rushing air. Uh, basically it's air that's rushing. you got an engine running at thousands of RPMs, hundreds of RPMs. It's going to create a, an air wash across them and it's going to pull out. I'm using a compressor and compressed air to do the same thing. Alright, back to our carburetor. So this has a plunger that squirts an extra bunch of fuel so that when you romp on the throttle it kind of helps you instead of relying on that low pressure to pull the fuel in, it squirts it in so that you get good throttle response. So you have a little throttle response plunger, we'll just call it that. This is where the fuel line goes into the carburetor. So the fuel goes in here, it, this is like a reservoir 
where it fills with gas and then there's a little float inside. I'll show you what that looks like. So we'll pull the top off and as we do, we've got all these linkages that are so fun. I've already pulled the clip off of this one and get that down low so it can unplug. Part of Chinese puzzles, this baby's made in the USA. So when you have a carburetor and you want to rebuild it, I'm going to throw in some extra details here and there. So this one, as it says right here, it's a two jet. It says two jet, but it's two barrel, two jet. Rochester. So these are the jets here and here. It's two barrel, two jets. So, this is in a GN, this is a Iron Duke engine, a little 2.5 liter, four, uh, four banger, four cylinder, and it's made in the USA. When you look on the side of the carburetor, there would be carburetor numbers that you can go by to get a carburetor kit. And what's a carburetor kit? Well, if you're going to tear this down, you don't want to put all the old gaskets back in again. Look at this gasket. It's pretty well worn. And uh, you can see it's got a tear here on a non-critical surface where it goes over the top here just as a bridge for structural support and assembly. So that's not bad, but you get all these gaskets. And the gasket for the air cleaner, you see like this one here, it goes over the top here. So a gasket kit's going to come with all that kind of stuff. It's going to come with a needle and seat, which we're about to cover with a float here. Remember that reservoir? Here's the little tank that fills full of fuel. So this fills, fuel, this fills full of fuel, and that fuel supplies all the different golf clubs, jets, however you want to look at it, circuits, uh, from here. So the fuel fills up in here. We'll go over how it gets there, but uh, basically from there it goes down into here. And this is where that plunger lives. You can see where there's a little spring to push a plunger back up. This is that plunger, that syringe that gives you the good throttle response. It just plunges. You see this little thing move right here? So when you stomp on the gas, that goes and it squirts the gas in there before the vacuum can build up so you get a better throttle response. It just throws the gas in there. This is your needle and seat right here. This is your float. We'll pull out the float wrist pin or whatever you want to call it. This is your needle. It's like a plunger. It's the off valve or the finger in the dam that stops the flow. So when you look here, this right here is your seat. And the seat's replaceable. You can see how you can use a screwdriver and take that out if you wanted to. And it's got a little thing where you can see around the side of it where the fuel will come in. You see that opening right there? So as that tank fills up, the float floats in the fuel and shuts it off. It puts a finger in the dam, it closes it off. Uh, of course, the needle is like the finger. Uh, but basically it just shuts off the fuel flow. So this is like a reservoir, a go-to reservoir where the vehicle can get fuel. So if your vehicle's been sitting for a while, uh, carburetors inherently need service. You get your carburetor replaced or done or whatever because things gum up. And fuel inherently doesn't last forever. That's why you have to use fuel stabilizer. Uh, you let your boat sit all winter and you don't use it. And then the fuel turns to varnish and it gums stuff up. Uh, hence the term of the fuel cleaner gum out. You know, it's a carburetor cleaner brand. Little uh, vent right here for vacuum. And sometimes these will go to your distributor if you have a vacuum distributor. Right at the point where air comes in is a significant point where the, you'll have vacuum in different places based on where the port is on this and they'll use it differently. So again, you got two barrels, you got two jets here. Uh, all the jet business is right here. This is like that straw that I was blowing on. Remember on this right here? So as I blow across that, air is blowing across this and the very tip of the straw that you see here for the main jet is this point right here. Here and here. I'm going to pull this off in a sec and we'll talk more about that. Uh, but fuel goes in through here and it can go in through here and it gets squirted in from here. So you got all these different holes and things that can get plugged up. Uh, that we service. This one I've already serviced and cleaned. Um, let me show you where it had blockages. These are your main jets. These are like your woods. These are just great big openings. These two bottom ones were open and these flood full of fuel basically the same as what this is and it goes through there and it just kind of seeks its own level. So when gas is full up to here it'll be full up to here and here and there. So you got your mid jet on each side you've got your main jet so these are your drivers these are your woods and uh, watch when I stick a, a welding wire up through here so I stick a welding wire can you see in the end there how it comes out the end and it's just open 
So if we look, that's hollow going down here. So when the air goes through, doesn't that look like a jet engine? You see how it tapers the air down so that it really gets it into a, a tight stream, condenses and cools it, so it's just blowing right through there. And that's like your air compressor nozzle. So your air compressor nozzle's here, uh, that little straw is there, and it just sucks the fuel right down the hole. So that's when you're at mid throttle or wide open throttle. So these little guys right here, um, if you stick a, a welding wire through these, it's easier to do it this way. This is your mid jet, and it just gets a little slurry of fuel through these guys. These were blocked. Um, it was blocked right here, and it was blocked right here, so it wouldn't run on the mid. You know, if you were to crank the engine over and floor it, or, you know, in this case, shove the, the throttle fully forward, you would go and you'd bypass this, and you'd bypass your starting circuit. So what about your putter? Where's your putter? We haven't talked about that yet. So these were both just really blocked. These were blocked a lot down the side so you can see right through them. So there's your jets. Here's another piece that you could get from your carburetor kit using the numbers on the carburetor. Uh, the best number for a carburetor comes from the top. There'll be a screw and a little tag right here. It'll have a very specific number on it so you can order a kit. But back in the day, they didn't have a cell phone. See, like what I do is I take my cell phone, I'll take a picture of the carburetor, all the different numbers, and it's on my phone. I have it on my person all the time. Back in the day, this boat's from the early 80s, they didn't have that. So a lazy mechanic would take the tag, which is basically like tin foil, and he just basically ripped the tag off and take it to the parts store with him. Whether it got back on or not, obviously in this case it didn't. You know, it makes it harder to get your kit. This guy goes in here. Uh, these are full of gas. And you've got your woods and you've got your chippers and drivers, right? So where is the putter? I'll show you where the putter is. I'm going to have to use some carburetor cleaner to do it. Hopefully I don't ruin my camera. It is these guys right here. Notice how they're on the other side from where the butterfly is. And you already saw these, didn't you? So where these are is just on the very side. I'm going to get my eye protection on uh, because this stuff, if it gets in your eye, it just burns and stings and sucks. It's just terrible. So I put the straw down in the side here and you see how it squirts through right there. So this is your putter. This is your idle speed, the very lowest whatever. So when you start the vehicle and the throttle's closed, Fuel can still get into the engine just a little bit, and this helps choke it, so it helps with starting. So that's your idle circuit. So you got your idle circuit, and then you go into these guys. That's your, your chipper driver. These are your woods. You get out cruising on the lake, doing your thing. And then you go back down to your chippers, your lower circuit, and then your very lower circuit. And so the fuel always goes in through the barrels, and that is how it gets there. And those are the principles by which it works. It works on the Venturi principle, and it works on low pressure uh, based on your cylinders pulling it. You know, so in this case with the air compressor, I was blowing and pushing air. But air is just rushing through. Is it pushing or is it pulling? You know, what is it? Well, it depends on what side you're on, on if it's a pushing or pulling. But basically, uh, air is being drawn through here and whatnot. So again with the carburetor kit, if you flip this, if you've unbolted it off of the vehicle, look at it from the bottom, you can see I've got screws here, here, and here. So there's another gasket that could be replaced. A gasket kit or a carburetor kit would usually come with uh, rubber lips for the plunger. This one's actually pretty good. It'd come with your gaskets, it'd come with the needle and seat. Um, it would come with the strainer screen that you see down here. There's a strainer screen for the fuel that goes out there. Um, you see all these little plugs and stuff, that's just for drilling, for building the carburetor. This is how you adjust how much is coming through there. You saw me where I squirted on the, uh, on the putter or the idle circuit. These adjust how much fuel uh, goes in for your idle. You can see it's spring retained or whatnot, so you can either use a wrench or a screwdriver. So the more you open this up, the less restriction there's going to be to that right there. You can see the end of the screw is just right there. If, say, we were to close it off, usually what people do is they'll close them off. So to close this one off, I went half turn, full turn, another half, two turns. So for this one, uh, which ran at sea level down in Texas, um, you go one, 
two turns out and then that's perfect so they'll probably both be set about the same but this is where you tweak and tune to get this adjusted to where it would idle properly there's two ways to set your idle there's the mixture of how much fuels going in at idle so and you can smell it if it's too rich or it'll backfire if it's too lean um, so you adjust that with these guys but then also your throttle position you adjust with the screw that's right here you see this is the throttle right here it runs with throttle butterflies so this screw goes against uh, the stop here so you would uh, tighten or loosen this and then that would uh, see the further you go this way the more it opens the throttle anyway that's how carburetors work uh, mysteries on the bottom of the ocean are a lot more mysterious than carburetors carburetors as the definition implies is an ingenious method to crudely meter fuel or basically you have to have 14.7 parts air to one part fuel so this uses how much air is going through in the Venturi principle to meter or inject how, or jet however much fuel you need to make that stoichiometric balance so that your vehicle will run well I really hope you enjoyed my video um, if you'd like to see more videos like this please click subscribe there's a little thing at the bottom corner right here that uh, a little red pickup truck or whatever you click on that and that'll get you subscribed um, and it doesn't cost you anything and you can just uh, watch videos as they come out I love to teach I love cars so this is like the perfect little thing for me so thanks for coming along and making it possible